the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. His birth had been prophesied since the dawn of time, the coming of a Messiah, the Savior of the world, to ransom mankind from the fall. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. But for Jesus the Christ, the King of Kings, there was no room in the inns. And so it was that Mary brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger.
was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God. so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The child grew and waxed strong in spirit, 
filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. It was my calling to prepare the way for him, him who would prepare the way for me. It was my calling to bear witness of his name, to prepare a people for their king. my calling to baptize the Son of God, but his shoes I am not worthy to unloose. So how can I fulfill this calling I've been given? Why is it me that he must choose? Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him, but John forbade him. No, Lord, for I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And now, if the Lamb of God, he being holy, should have need to be baptized by water to fulfill all righteousness, oh, then how much more need have we, being unholy, to be baptized, yea, even by water? And now I would ask of you, my beloved brethren, wherein the Lamb of God did fulfill all righteousness in being baptized by water. Know ye not that he was holy? But notwithstanding he being holy, he showeth unto the children of men that according to the flesh he humbleth himself before the Father, and witnesseth unto the Father that he would be obedient unto him in keeping his commandments. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. 
Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, Thou wouldst have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. I came to draw some water from the spring at Jacob's well, but there instead I met a Jew. I did not understand the meaning of the words he spake, and yet all I had done he knew. He claimed to have some water that would make me thirst no more, and yet he claimed to have no well. I knew there was to be a savior come into the world. Could this be he? I asked to tell. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, city and came unto him, and many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him, for the saying of the woman which testified, He told me all that I ever did, and many more believed because of his own word, and said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. <laughs>
this man who claimed to be the promised Christ. He was my judge. This man who they all claimed was full of lies. They asked his verdict because the law would have me stoned by throngs. They wanted words to accuse him of the greater wrong. And he spoke not, but being provoked, he let his will be known. Him among you, him without sin, let him first cast a stone at her. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and a woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself, and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go, and sin no more.
Then cometh Jesus with his disciples unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto them, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little further, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered unto the Jews. And now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? I find in this man no fault at all, this man you've brought unto me. Will ye therefore that I release him unto you? What wrong has he done? He tried to teach us. It was his calling to prepare the way for us. He is Messiah. This man is the Messiah.
I stood there in the garden Watching his blood be shed for me He spoke not one complaint Although I knew his agony And suddenly a crowd appeared And I could not believe what I saw Trusted now, betrayed the Son of God. And as they laid their hands on him, I reached to grab my sword. But Jesus pulled my hand away and spoke these simple I give now unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. For my peace I give unto you. I went into the city where they would try him for his cause. This man so badly beaten he should not have been alive. And although he was a perfect man, they called for him to die. This man whom they'd seen raise the dead, bring sight unto the blind and as they led the sun away he must have sensed my pain for Jesus wiped my tears away and spoke these words again I give now unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. For my peace I give unto you. I followed them to the hill where they would crucify. I saw them nail his hands and feet into a wooden board. And as they raised him on the cross, I felt an emptiness inside. For on this day, on Calvary, my Lord for me had died. And as I looked upon the cross, my eyes filled up with tears. But once again, my Savior's words of love silenced my fears. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give now unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid for my peace. 
He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulcher, wherein was never man yet laid. There laid they Jesus. Mary Magdalene was the first to come to the sepulcher after the crucifixion. When she saw that the stone had been rolled away and that the tomb was empty, she ran to tell Peter and John. Come and see the sepulchre where we have laid my Lord. Come and see the empty tomb. The two apostles came to see, then left sorrowing. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and seeth two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, They have taken my dear Lord away. They've laid him, I know not. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, please tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, 
Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. After his death, his resurrection, and the ascension to his Father, Jesus Christ did show himself unto the people of Nephi, his sheep of the American continent, and did minister unto them. In third Nephi it is recounted, and it came to pass, as they understood, they cast their eyes up again towards heaven, and behold, they saw a man descending out of heaven, and he was clothed in a white robe. And he came down and stood in the midst of them, and the eyes of the whole multitude were turned upon him. And they durst not open their mouths, even one to another, and wist not what it meant. For they thought it was an angel that had appeared unto them. And it came to pass that he stretched forth his hand and spake unto the people, saying, Behold, I am Jesus Christ, whom the prophets testified shall come into the world. And behold, I am the light and the life of the world. And I have drunk out of that bitter cup which the Father hath given me, and have glorified the Father in taking upon me the sins of the world, in the which I have suffered the will of the Father in all things from the beginning. And it came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words, the whole multitude fell to the earth. For they remembered that it had been prophesied among them that Christ should show himself unto them after his ascension into heaven. They 
saw and felt the nail prints in his hands. They bore witness of the wound within his side. The nail prints in the master's feet were rained upon with tears. The Savior stood before their weary They listened to his voice, a voice of peace. The echo of his love shone in his hands. But one man standing in their midst knew nothing of his life. And wondering, question round him, who's this man? mankind was in his eyes. The man who once knew blindness beheld the Son of God. His ears were open to the angel's Disappeared. And Jesus had returned into heaven. The man was still left waiting to ponder on what passed. He lifted up his eyes toward the Had seen what all eyes should see. He had heard what all ears must hear. He had partaken of the love of God. And now he too could testify. Of all mankind. 
He is Jesus Christ. He is the Savior and the Redeemer of the world. He is the Son of God, and He lives. Our Redeemer lives. In an epistle to his son Moroni, the prophet Mormon counseled, My son, be faithful in Christ. May he lift thee up, and may his sufferings and death, and the showing of his body unto our fathers, and his mercy and long suffering, and the hope of his glory and of eternal life, rest in your mind forever. Yea, come unto Christ, and be perfected in him, and deny yourselves of all ungodliness. And if ye shall deny yourselves of all ungodliness, and love God with all your might, mind, and strength, then is his grace sufficient for you, that by his grace ye may be perfect in Christ. And if by the grace of God ye are perfect in Christ, ye can in no wise deny the power of God, Come unto Jesus Christ.